All right, welcome to Friendly Pharmacy 5. Today I have with me the lovely Raywin May. Raywin is a microbiologist from Australia um, and you are extremely qualified, Raywin. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, thanks so much, Lindsay, for having me on. It's good to be on here and share with you all. So I'm from Brisbane, Australia and um, I'm a scientist, a researcher, microbiologist, and I've been doing some speaking and lecture at different universities and work with corporate groups and individuals. Um, so I set up my business as RM Health Stylist to work with people and corporate groups to have a balanced lifestyle and feeling great in their health. And I'm also a gut and microbiome certified advisor and I do a lot of coaching and wellness as well. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, I've seen some of the work that you do and it's it's amazing. I'm so excited that you're here with us. Um, <laughs> so during this uh, strange time in the world, the strange time of COVID-19, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your experience in Australia and maybe even a little bit about, you know, now that most countries have gone through the process of being in lockdown and now coming out of it. Um, how do you think this has affected um, people and maybe even you could talk a little bit about affected their mental health somewhat? Sure. Yeah, it's affected people in different ways. Um, today I was just reading that because in Melbourne they're locked down compared to we're not. And um, so therefore people are going to the shops under financial hardship and is one in four of them are purchasing um, the wrong foods and because that's, that's what they can afford, you know, just so that's going to impact their health and impact their gut health, which is sad and therefore will impact their mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so we were in um, a semi lockdown for about five weeks and that was okay. Mm -hmm. I can um, put my hand up and say that my husband and I lost weight in that time, whereas oh. many people, yeah, <laughs> many people in this time are putting on weight or going reaching for the alcohol. Um, yeah, so we were able to keep up our exercise and eat well, and so that was great. But um, talking about mental health, it is on the increase, and it's one in five. 20% of Australians between 16 and 85 that have a mental issue. And it's 54% that are not speaking out about it or telling anyone or getting treatment for it. So I think that's quite high and, you know, we can help and there's people out here there to help with that. That's interesting. So I know that Part, part of the issue here in Canada uh, during COVID has been that, um, and I think this was more so at the beginning, but part of the issue was that people were not, and this is just in general, people were not necessarily seeking treatment for health issues because they were scared of COVID. When we yep. talk about when we talk about mental health, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the stigma around that and how people yep. do not understand, and so they are also less likely to seek help. So, do you see uh, it is the the issue with people uh, not seeking help? Is it do you think more of a stigma issue, or is it an issue of maybe the effects of uh, lockdown where people are less likely to seek a healthcare professional? What do you think the barriers are to that? Um, I think it's all of those barriers. And mm. I've been noticing um, because people are locked down or working from home and they're the homeschooling as well as trying to work from home at the same time, that mm -hmm. all has an impact on their mental state. Mm. And so mental illnesses can be anything from moods to depression, um, even fog brain. So people, I work with people that have fog brain and they can have that lifted within about three days. And they just feel great in themselves. So it's about putting simple things into place mm -hmm. to help that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so what could, what can people do or what, what are some simple things that people could do? Like you mentioned that people are buying the wrong foods and that that could affect their mental health. So yeah. what are simple things that people could do that could have maybe a, a fairly quick effect on their, positive effect on their 
their mental health? Well, I'm big on whole foods. So whole foods has to be number one, your green leafy vegetables and some fruits. And also limit your sugar. Mm -hmm. And just um, there's other things like we need to get out and, and outside and getting our vitamin D is really mm -hmm. important. And that helps um, our serotonin level. And um, yeah, and also exercise. So I'm big on exercise and it's not about going out to doing something that your friend is doing or your family's doing. It's something personal for you that you enjoy mm -hmm. and um, you'll get more benefits from it finding what's the best exercise for you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very good. And actually, my last video did talk a little bit about vitamin D as well. Here in Canada, we don't get as much sunshine, right? So yeah. it's also much more of a factor. So we're kind of like, right now, we're ha it's our summer, right? So yep. let's get out and get your vitamin yes. D, you know, while the sun is while the sun is here. So yeah, yeah. so you also um, so you also are a specialist in the gut and the microbiome, the mic so could you define for our viewers, before we talk about the microbiome, what we're talking, what that means? Could okay, <laughs> sure, yep. So the microbiome is made up of all bacteria, fungi and viruses inside and outside of our body. And um, so they come about from our genetics, they come about from our environmental, what we're exposed to, um, how we were birthed from our mother, also um, what we eat. So, and a microbiome, you want it to have it in a balanced state. So there can be certain microbes that can be more prolific than others, and therefore they will override the good bacteria. Mm -hmm. And you want them in a balanced state to feel really good in yourself. So I have worked with somebody that had an balanced microbiome, and they went to many specialists and doctors and couldn't find what the issue was. They had a microbiome test done and I was able to pinpoint the actual um, foods that they were eating and removing certain foods mm -hmm. stopped that un imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they had a, um, a better digestive system. So it was great, great result for them. That is great. And there are so many people who have issues with their gut, right? Especially, you know, I hear it in the pharmacy. I've heard it for years. And, yeah. and often they, these people really struggle with what is going on. And it's, yeah. you know, sometimes it's like every time I eat or I can't eat this, I can't eat that. I can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on. And, and they really struggle with finding someone who can actually do what you said you just did is you could actually pinpoint this is the yeah. problem and this is what you need to do to, to fix it. Right. Yeah. And do you um, see the, that people's gut health or the, the flora, so the bacteria in their gut can affect their mental health? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Really? So, um, yeah. So like I was saying, when you know the right, so I work on the basis of knowing the right foods for people. So mm -hmm. certain foods will trigger off inflammation, will trigger off issues for them. Mm. And whether it's bloating or not digesting properly or an illness or a mm -hmm. disease even. And by removing those certain foods and replacing them with better options, you see better um, outcome. And therefore, that will in turn treat your um, gut bacteria better as well. And, and it will re reduce inflammation. So we want to have reduced inflammation as much as possible because that's what's causing a lot of illnesses and diseases. And you see that a high sugar diet can be a factor in an increased in increased inflammation in general. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can have sugar and it will spike your insulin level and then you'll have a crash afterwards. So you want to go for low GI foods or low sugar content mm -hmm. so that um, that food or drink will sustain you longer and you won't get that crash and burn quicker. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what you need. Um, so I have done a 21 day weight loss program that I run. It's no wow. shakes, no diets and purely on foods, less sugars and people lose weight within two or three days um, and feeling great within themselves. It's something that they can take that plan away and continue doing. And what's that called again? No shakes and no what? Um, no shakes, no diet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not 
because I'm not really specifically into diets. It's more looking at the right foods for you. Yeah, and I like that approach because that's more of a sustainable approach. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, you know, often people will do a detox or they will do a cleanse and it's not necessarily addressing the root issue. It yep. might make you feel good for a week and then you're kind of right back where you started with the same habits, the same yep. lifestyle, right? So I yep. like that. That's great. We'll put a we'll put a link to that maybe in the video description. You can just the name of that if people want to look for it or something like that. Oh, they they won't. Um, I've run oh. it three times, so okay. I haven't. I haven't. Um, not sure when I'm going to run it again. But if there's interest, if people see yeah. me an interest, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds. That's. that's but that really covers. Cool. That covers everything. Covers you. Um, I talk about um, fitness or exercise and I talk about sleep. So sleep has a huge impact on our health. Mm -hmm. And I talk about the effects of coffee, caffeine, um, and I talk about getting out, getting your vitamin D. I talk about supplementing. Um, oh, there's a whole range of things that I talk about. Yeah. That's, yeah, that sounds, that sounds uh, amazing. Yeah, so it's a holistic approach. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, I know. I remember, um, you know, a couple of months ago, um, or maybe it was a little bit longer than that, when uh, people were going into lockdown different places in the world, in Canada, and I actually one of my pharmacist friends just referred to uh, the, the gain of weight that she's seeing in people, she calls it the COVID belly, right? So a lot of people are walking around now, and they've got their COVID belly, belly or people are saying it's the COVID-19 belly, like 19 pounds or something. And um, you know, it's it's definitely a concern. And when this happened, and I know Brazil hasn't fared very well during the pandemic, mm -hmm. but I actually heard the Minister of Agriculture, they were a little bit concerned at one time because people were changing their eating habits and they were actually eating very, very healthy. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised because that was not what was happening in Canada. That's not what yeah. we were observing, right? And I, I would wonder. I wonder if they're the exception because I think generally people have really. It's been a stressful time. It's been a time when you're home and you want comfort food and you're seeking the wrong That's food, true. right? And it's a concern because we know that obesity is a major factor, not just for this virus that we're experiencing now, but just for you know health risk in general, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah just got to be mindful of, you know, do I really need that? food or should I reach for a better option or why yeah. do I need, why do I need that food why am I yeah, that's that? right. <laughs> yeah and yeah. do you see do you see um do you see how um different autoimmune conditions or um how different health conditions can be related to the gut like do you see that in your practice as well yeah so there's over 80 different autoimmune diseases and some of them um I'll just tell you a few um, celiac, thyroid, cancer, diabetes, ADHD, irritable bowel syndrome, um, inflammatory bowel disease, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. and to name a few. So a lot of those that I've spoken about, I've been able to work with people that have had those and been able to have um, improved results for them. So that's been good. But if you, um, anyone on here, is interested in joining me on my I have a two-hour workshop mm -hmm. and it talks about how inflammation forms how the gut or the digestion forms and how things impact it and what to remove and to um, have a better outcome so yeah it start everything starts in the gut from my research and knowledge and working with others mm -hmm. I see that everything starts in the gut and once you know how to increase your in, um, hydrochloric acid level and to digest better and have the right foods, um, you know, the, the right minerals and nutrients go into the bloodstream and into the other parts of your body where it should be. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was just going to touch on your immune system. So mm -hmm. being in COVID, it's really important to and strengthen your immune system so that again starts in your gut so mm -hmm. if your gut's not functioning well then your immune system won't function well and people are not aware that you know immune system starts in your gut mm -hmm. and um, so you know 
when we, you need to take everything into perspective, your sleeping, your going outdoors, your exercise, your eating, reducing your stress, um, even having at this time, people are feeling better by having family and friends around. And mm -hmm. even if you can't physically see them by connecting online or on the phone, um, you know, everyone's doing that now, so it's really good. And mm -hmm. we just had um, our family get together Oh, it was last weekend before um, we won't see some of them for a year or more. And I was able to call in all the other family members from overseas and we all got together and chatted. And it was just so good. If yeah. you can't fly there, we can, we've can. we got this technology, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if some of that is linked to maybe like cortisol levels. I'm just thinking yes. of stress hormones and how yep. we, we need that relationship, right? And yep. even, even yep. just even the ability um, just to, yeah, to talk to, to see another face and to connect with someone yes. and, and that it, it, it's all linked and, and we really oh. need to start realizing this. <laughs> yes, that's right. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. another area I haven't talked about, you being a pharmacist, I um, lecture to pharmacy students at university right. yes. and, and microbiology and we look at the right treatment, the right antibiotics for those, you know, for whatever ailments it is teaching yeah. the students to look for the right antibiotics. And um, so a antibiotics and medication have a huge impact on your health as well and your gut. Mm -hmm. And I not, I'm not against taking medication. I don't like anyone to stop their medication. They need to do that in consultation with their doctor or specialist. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, But they do have an impact on reducing your mineral levels and your vitamin levels, antioxidant levels. So therefore, you need to be um, supplementing. You know, people need to think about that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's another thing they need to think about. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, and I was thinking as I was preparing for this talk that when I was in pharmacy school, we learned all about antibiotics and different disease states. We did learn that you know there is bacteria in the gut and there's bacteria on your skin, um, yeah. but no one really taught us about how vital that bacteria is and how what a what an important role it plays and how antibiotics yes sometimes they're necessary but they yep. they really do wreak havoc on your on your gut and so yeah. you you do need some kind of support i guess probably during treatment and even after i would guess yeah so it takes one lot of antibiotics so just think of a baby um they they sometimes have antibiotics early in their life Mm -hmm. um, or, or premature babies have antibiotics and so that disrupts your gut flora straight away mm -hmm. and um, I'm a big advocate for probiotics so yeah. I have have I have also run um, probiotics um, workshop online mm -hmm. and it, so it goes through all the different um, antibiotics and probiotics and what we can do excellent but, um, you, you know it's not one probiotic that fits everyone. It's mm -hmm. what you need. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's many, many different probiotics out there. And I'm grateful that I align myself with a company where I can suggest, you know, certain probiotics and that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so you just got to find out which is the right one for you. And when you're on antibiotics, definitely take a probiotics and at least stay on them for about two or three months afterwards. Two or three months, yeah. I always recommended them to my patients when they were taking uh, antibiotics and even for a while after. Um, but yeah, those are really, really yeah. important points for sure. Yeah. And do, yeah. you have any, do you have any other, um, I guess, ways or techniques that we could, uh, for, for strengthening our immune system generally? You've already kind of touched a little bit on. Um, um, if you come to my workshop, you'll know more. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, yeah, I think it's everybody's different, and you just need to know which is the right foods for you. And more than anything, get off your processed foods, limit your sugar. For some people, the caffeine is a havoc, so it can irritate your gut lining. Yeah, and um, some people tolerate it okay, some people can't. So you just got to kind of know what you can have and what you can't have. You need your sleep, so it's really important to get. Mm -hmm. adequate sleep and need some form of exercise and 
for a lot of people they need to supplement because they've been on medication that's you know played havoc to their gut mm -hmm. so yeah there's a whole lot of things that you can um, put into place yeah yeah and that's a huge conversation and i know i did a video a couple of videos on sleep and it's really important and you know it's not the most exciting topic <laughs> but it's <laughs> it's so vital and that's why it's yeah. two videos on it because it is part of the whole process. We need to start there and then we can, yeah. you know, start looking at foods, yeah. nutrients, that yeah. kind of thing. There's a lot of medications that can, you know, for example, metformin can affect your B12 levels, things like that. And these are things that your your doctor probably won't tell you because they don't have the time or the knowledge or or whatever. So it's these are things that we really need to kind of advocate for ourselves, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's really important. Yeah. So you um you commented, I heard you in another uh, interview about the mitochondria and how the mitochondria changes with age. And I was just like fascinated by this. So could you could you explain a little bit about just for our viewers what the mitochondria is and how it does change with age and what what maybe considerations we need to, you know, take into effect as we age? Um, okay, cool. Just, just yep. Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so the mitochondria is in your cells and it's the powerhouse of your cells. So it's what gives you the energy. So as we age, I'm, you just think about as you age, um, you can see 80 year olds have probably got less energy or less, they're working less or they're doing things less. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what happens at ages over time from environmental factors, your stress, the wrong foods, the medication, poor sleep, all these factors um, have an impact on your mitochondria level um, and your antioxidant levels lower, mm -hmm. become lower. So um, it's good that to know that there is a company out there that has patented their um, products with this mitochondria level in it to hit your cells mm -hmm. and we're seeing people having renewed energy and feeling great and so yeah it's more about finding you know the right foods for you and supplementing where you need to and having your minerals and getting out your getting your vitamin d so vitamin d zinc and a quality multivitamin is is ideal for a lot mm -hmm. of people Mm -hmm. And if you can get something that will s enhance your mitochondria is the way to go. And because mm -hmm. we're living longer and working longer now. And right. as we're working longer, people are wanting more energy, feeling better to be able to cope and be more productive in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's fascinating. I uh, I love that that topic. And I, I did not know that. You know, we know that with um, as as we age, we... Uh, our immune system does become weakened. Like we don't respond as well to say a vaccine or, you know, we could be more predisposed yeah. to infection, right? Um, but yeah, I didn't know that. And I didn't know that, you know, it would be necessary as you get older to start supporting your body more, even even because there there are more things that we are, yeah, we're living longer. Our lives are a little more busier, right? Yes. And we want to be able to live better, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, those are those are really, really important points. Um, so this has been a really great talk, Raywin. Is there anything else you would like to, uh, to add or inspire us with all your, all your knowledge? <laughs> what are your, what are your thoughts as we, as we go to, to into the, maybe the second half of the year here, I guess? <laughs> um, I just can't think enough about how we need to support our mental health because uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to keep, keep on about that because, yeah. We, you know, I've just come from a two-day conference and a, that was spoken about, you know, every second person spoke about it. Mm -hmm. And it's impacting um, the workplace, impacting employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and they want to still be able to be functional and working well. And mm -hmm. so therefore you need to support them. So I'm grateful that I run programs and workshops to help support, you know, individuals as well as companies. And... Mm -hmm. There's a company I work with in Brisbane. So we we went into a semi-lockdown for five weeks and they've only just started in July going back to the work. So they broke them up into two um, teams and each team is only allowed to go to work one day a week and the rest of it they work from home. Mm -hmm. So they're having to 
adjust with that, mm -hmm. being at home now going one day a week and right. waiting for the government to say when they can increase to go, you know, longer or more days. Yeah, so having to balance work, life, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's really important. And I think that it's also important for people to realize that it's not always um, necessarily an antidepressant that is going to solve no. the issue. And, yeah. you know, I, I heard about a study in Canada recently where uh, some pharmacists were actually helping um, patients and this was a this was more a sleep issue but with a I've seen good results with cognitive behavioral therapy and depression and you know even sleep issues and cognitive behavioral therapy there's there are options for people and sometimes I wonder if people just don't want or don't seek treatment because they're afraid of you know having to go on a medication or something and I know there is a place for that but yes. that yeah. is we can also have a broader conversation, right, about this. And I think that that's what, what you probably do with the people that come to you. Um, yeah. And try to address what what's going on. This is lifestyle. This is diet. There's a yeah. lot of different things that we can address before we, you know, need to go to, to a medication. Oh, definitely. I'll just read out one of my testimonials. You can find that on my website. Um, this person started working with me under my plan, one of my plans. Um, they lost a staggering 18 kilos. So I don't know what that is in your weight. Like 30, um, 36 pounds or 38 or something. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, all due to Raywin's knowledge on gut health and eating the right foods. This person suffered from Crohn's disease and had a consultation with gastroenterology gastroenterologist late, recently. Um, she was pleasantly surprised at the amount of weight reduction and commended me on taking up this program and eating healthy foods and drinking more water. My doctor says that my inflammation markers have reduced significantly since my last visit. So working on the gut will reduce that inflammation. Um, recently, I've been having dizzy spells when standing, when standing up from sitting. I went to my general GP general practitioner doctor who said because I lost that amount of weight he had to reduce the amount of heart medication by call yeah. so by half so that was great for them yeah. um, and because of that they lowered their blood pressure that was lowering his blood pressure as well hence that I was feeling dizzy mm -hmm. so um, they took him completely off blood pressure medications the cover cell yeah. and because of his healthy lifestyle and reduced weight and he just said he couldn't highly recommend my program wow and yeah so I mean I just love helping people because I have come from a medical background and I've seen way too many diseases and illnesses on the increase I've seen antimicrobial antimicrobial resistance you know like 10 years ago I was seeing that and why do people need to suffer unnecessarily when they just can improve their gut health which is what yeah. it's all Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think often people just don't know where to turn or they don't yeah. know that this is an option or they've done yeah. the same thing for 10 years and, and why would someone care to help me now and that kind of yeah. thing. Right? And I think that people really need to know that, no, this is the conversation worth having. This could yeah. change your life. You know, the person that, yeah. that wrote that, imagine if they had not found you and had not sought your yeah. help, right? Yeah. So I think it's beautiful the work that you're doing. You're having a great impact on public health. Yeah. The you know one of the things that has really um, been exposed during this time with COVID nineteen is that we are all. I mean, generally there is so much illness in our populations. There are so many chronic diseases, and these are they're an issue for for people personally, but they're also a huge public health issue. There's a lot of money going into um, you know, medications and therapies. And, you know, if we can try to get people healthy and it is possible, we can, you know, we can improve your quality of life and, you know, have a little bit of a different conversation. You know, sometimes medication is, is still something that is needed. And then sometimes, yeah, like if someone loses weight, we do need to look at, okay, well now we have to yeah. reduce the dose. Right. Yeah. So it needs to be something that is, you know, um, 
uh, multifaceted, you know, and multidisciplinary, but it is a conversation worth having. And I want people to understand that. And you've, you've proven that during this talk. So, and it's inspiring because you're seeing results. I can see it in your face, right? You're passionate yeah. about this because you see that it's really working. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So if people want to find you, Raywin, um, how can they find you uh, online? I know you're on a few different a few different platforms. We'll put all the links up in the video as well. Um, what's the best place to uh, to find you? Um, I don't. Oh, anything. So Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, LinkedIn. Okay. okay. And you go as you are um, the RM Health Stylist, right? So yeah. Raywin May Health Stylist. Right? Yeah. So you can. Um, I've got a website, so you can um, email me through that if you like. Okay. Well. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for this talk. This has been such a rich discuss discussion and I think it was really worth having. I know that our viewers will really appreciate it. So thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Yes, take care, Raywin. Thank Bye -bye. you.